Well, hi there. Today's the day. I'm going to go around my backyard and check out where the redback spiders are. I'll also implement a little burn method that will hopefully control the numbers of these pests. I'm coming in on the 27th of September, so we're just past the equinox being the 23rd, and I believe I should do it a bit earlier because I've seen enough evidence already that these spiders are breeders. Warning, the warning on this spider video has been removed, and this video is highly educational. There's the date of today, and there is my gappy teeth when I was a kid. Here's our beautiful springtime garden. We had a stack of rain yesterday, which is really nice because it has been so dry. I think the first zone I'm going to take a look at is down there. Those tubs down there have often been the home of redback spiders. At least I'm not seeing a pair of mummy's gloves down on the ground. I wonder why mummy does this pattern with the timber across the garden there. There's our early veggie patches coming along. And uh, the place where I need to look here is down in front of the tubs here and also up inside there. This is up between the first two tubs uh, at a glance. It looks fairly clean, but sometimes there'll be a small black spider that can be tricky to see. I'm gonna still hit it with flame. What I will do here is, and I'm wearing gloves, is I pull these tubs apart a bit because sometimes a bit of separation can help me identify what's going on. Uh, but the best thing that I can see here is, is the fact there's no spider web. If there's no spider web, there tends to be no spider. So with a nice gap between the tubs there, wow, it's looking uh, very clean. That's uh, extremely different versus a couple of years back. If there are any immature redbacks in there, well, I can easily do this. Don't need to do very much. It's sorted. I'm just going to drag this pot along next and then take a look down the next crack there. It's looking remarkably clean. This is uh, fantastic. This is great to see. I have got my little scraper tool. I know some people like this uh, in action. And I'll see what I drag out of here. Oh, it's now just dropped down, but uh, the tool's looking pretty clean. I just noticed Mrs. Snail down here. Um, yeah, friend or foe. Uh, maybe give her the flick because, well, she's mummy's garden up. See you, Snail. I'll come in and totally clean up between there. Okay, that's it, done. And in the repeating process, I'll just shuffle this tub along. Boy, oh boy, they're heavy. Uh, they're full of soil, that's why. And do the same to the next gap. This is between the next gap and just like the last gap, I'll tell you what, it's as clean as a whistle, it's remarkable. And like a broken record, you know what comes next, don't you? That's all you need. This is almost too easy. I actually prefer the bigger flame because it's got a lot more heat uh, than that smaller burner that I use. I just think it's a lot more effective, okay? The next gap. I'll just come in and use that monkey tool. I'll see what comes out. I don't suspect much will. Well, the tool is looking pretty clean. I can't see a spider web or spider on that tool. This is fantastic news uh, for me, and it's also proof to me that my little method of spider control, ugh, it's a heavy one, that one, is uh, working very well. It's clean in there, so you know what comes next, don't you? Yeah. Dusted. And of course, I've got my little burner here. It's a little uh, weed dragon thing. Um, a bit baby for weeds. I think you need a bigger version than this. And if I spin it upside down, I can always do that lazy flame and um, clean up. But I'll tell you what, if I'm not seeing spider web, uh, I'm not going to find spider. And the places where these spiders used to be lurking, well, it's very clean at the beginning of this spider season. One problem for me is that mummy really likes to use these tubs in the garden. And they really were the perfect redback spider home, presented nice hidey holes for them. Uh, but this is a great method to... Uh, so just clean them up and take them out. I've got quite a few zones to do it. It actually doesn't take that long. I just make sure that I'm nice and thorough doing this. But not only thorough, I'm just being careful as well. Ah, oh, do you remember this pot here? Ah, uh, well this is one pot I can put the burner down on and I can talk about this very briefly. This was a pot that had a really bad redback spider up inside the handle there. I put on Vaseline onto this one. I, I got it all uh, soft and I painted it on. It's a very messy job, uh, but I can guarantee to you uh, there's no web there, there's no spiders. I think the Vaseline methods are better than the white lithium grease. The, the thing about the white lithium grease, it's very convenient. And I also notice underneath here is another one of our friends. Let's have a careful look. Whoa! 
If you look carefully on the ground there, there's a colony of ants getting about. Oh yeah, so like the Vaseline method, it is a bit messy. Um, it's still very present on this pot, but it's very, very effective. Do you remember this wheelbarrow here and what was living underneath here at one point? And I treated this with white lithium grease. Let's just tip it over. It's got water in because we've had that rain. See who's living underneath now. Whoa! Just taking a look at the wheel here. The spiders like to set up inside the spokes here. It looks nice and clean. There's not a sign of web. And there's no web. There ain't going to be any spider uh, under the subframe of this wagon. It seems very clean as well. And if I tilt that wheel over to the sun, I'm not seeing any little spiders or web or anything. Yeah, it looks pretty darn clean. Yeah, so white lithium grease, sure, it leaves a white mark, but it is nice and convenient and easy to put on. And sometimes convenience is your best friend. I'm just going to take a very quick look at this area here. Just in the shady spot first, uh, I can't see any spider web, it's looking nice and clean. I'm just going to come across to this pot here again, if I'm not seeing spider webs and things that redbacks do, uh, there'll be no spider. And really this is the prime position for spiders, it's in the warmth here, uh, they would love to set up in these pots and I've actually noticed there's something going on around these pots. Let me move this one out nice and carefully and I'll show you what's going on underneath. I've got to be careful or else mummy knows I've been playing in a garden. Oops, that one's over. Now I've got this saying that if I see ants under a pot, uh, you won't find a spider in the pot and I believe that is the case here. I also suspect their nest extends up inside the pot there. Well it does look like I've upset the apple cart there by exposing the ant nest, I better cover them back up. Because I have certainly worked out uh, that ants are one of my biggest friends in the fight against uh, red backs in the backyard and I better make this look like the way mummy had it. It's also going to help if I get all that stuff back in here and straighten that plant up in the way that it should be. Or oh, I don't think it's looking crash hot at the moment. I hope I'm not in trouble. I better come in and give the ants back some privacy as well. There. I'm just looking at the pots along there and I can't see any spider web, which is great news. Uh, it's really looking very clean. Oh yes, do you remember this citrus tree in front of you right here? Do you remember what I did to this tree? I think it was last summer. Do we need to be reminded? So we've wound back time nine months. This is back in December of 2017 and the citrus tree was in a lot of peril because stink bugs do a stack of damage. In fact, once you've got a lot of stink bugs on your citrus tree, what you'll find is the tree will never bear any fruit. Apart from not bearing fruit, this citrus tree was quite stunted versus the other ones that we had purchased at the same time that we planted in our backyard many years ago. So basically stink bugs are like a death sentence for citrus. This citrus tree had a major infestation, the other citrus trees in our backyard had minor infestations. But one thing that was clear to me after doing some reading online is that getting rid of stink bugs isn't that easy. The one thing that I'm learning is, is to control critters and bugs and really hammer them is you've got to break into their breeding cycle. It's one thing to take out the stink bugs on the tree, but you've also got to get the eggs that they lay on the underneath of leaves. And I think my very unorthodox method has been a winner because not only has it taken out the stink bugs, but I do believe it has broken the breeding cycle of these very insidious little critters. I know I copped a lot of flack from the online experts who saw this video and they said to me, Leo, you have successfully killed that citrus tree. Well, no, I have successfully killed the stink bugs. The citrus tree has rebounded and is growing like it has never grown before because there are no stink bugs sapping the life out of this tree. And what I really like about this method, and it's the same with controlling the redback spiders, it's a really fast, effective and chemical free method of controlling critters. And I guarantee to you the hate trolls who had a go at me nine months ago about this video will now be silenced. You won't hear a word from them. Yes, many, many people commented on that video that uh, after I'd hit this tree with a flamethrower, that was it for this tree. It was going to die. It was never going to come back. Well, I can just show you here that um, possibly some of the people who were laying in comments there were totally wrong. What I see going on here is the stuff of life. I'm seeing flowers and I'm not seeing stink bugs and that's the way I want to see it. I'll tell you what, the backyard is such a contrast of what's going on here versus a couple of years back when there was just so many redback spiders. Let me take a look. Ooh, this area up here. In fact, I might have a quick look at Mrs. Rooster to see what's going on there. Mrs. Rooster uh, resides beside Mrs. Cow. Mind you, I don't think you can have a Mrs. Rooster, can you? 
And what I do see is a matrix of web going on around that zone there. Well, I've got a sneaky suspicion that's actually uh, one of our friendly spiders, and I'll just have a careful look here. Going by that style of web, uh, that's like what you'll see with black house spiders. It might be just a garden type spider. If that type of spider is there, and I'm pretty sure it's not a red back, or else I wouldn't be putting my finger in there, would I? Um, we'll keep that spider there because it will keep the red backs out. It's definitely the sort of ornament the red backs would love. Uh, they would love to get up into the head there, get their drop down lines going there, and set up inside uh, Mrs. Rooster here. Uh, but that other spider, I'm pretty sure, will inhibit that activity and we'll put Mrs. Rooster back where she belongs. So, okay, this was an area here that was heavily infested with redback spiders uh, with Tonka trucks and whatnot uh, a couple of years back now. It was only, oh, fairly recently, I found a redback spider up inside Mrs. Cow. I ended up taking that redback spider out and the egg sac, and it would have been around about now or the next couple of weeks that egg sac would have hatched and the spiderlings would have been trying to find a new home. And this is a scenario you've got to think about. Where would the spiderlings go that were in Mrs. Cow? Well, they would have drifted and found the next best home for them, which would have possibly been along here where I've set up these ornaments. At the moment, this is looking pretty clean. I'm seeing lots of ant and lizard activity, or should I say skink. I think I can pretty safely pick these up and move them around. I'm not seeing web attached to the ground. Uh, these were purchased at Aldi. I think you put plants inside here again. This is like a perfect redback environment I'm not seeing web around here. It's looking actually very clean underneath. It's looking clean uh, You would see web attached to the ground if there was redbacks there And I'm pretty sure uh, even with the red vehicle here is the same. I've picked this up here It looks very clean. I can't see web attached to the ground Yes, it's uh, quite amazing this may play out a little bit differently once we get into the proper spider season. We're right at the start of it now. And really the only two redback spiders that I've found so far was one uh, inside Mrs. Cow, of course, and the other one was underneath the red bin that we have, which had yet to be treated with the white lithium grease. It has now got the white lithium grease on there, but it's only been two breeding redback spiders that I've found so far. A couple of years back, crikeys, I must have found at least ten. I am noticing around Mrs. Cocky's beak there um, some webbing, but I think that's one of our friends. Uh, if we've got friendly spiders, yes, we want to keep them round. I set this area up in January 2018 and my son put these dinosaurs in here. Uh, it was a toy that I purchased at Toys R Us and he just wanted to sort of make it a bit more exciting. I think he's achieved that. Well, I'm very happy with what I found. Or should I say, I'm very happy with what I didn't find. Did we see any redback spiders lurking around in my backyard? No. Did we see any of their distinctive webs? No. Did I do spider burns last summer in times when I felt it was very important to do so? Yes, I did. And I think this is what's bringing down the redback spider numbers in my backyard. My system is based around the redback spider breeding cycle, in particular the fact that the egg sacs take between, let's say, six to eight weeks to open up, and if I can nab the spiders before those egg sacs are developed and set up, well then I'm going to start to control in numbers. Hopefully this video is the proof of that. And I will finish off with a bit of a peek into the redback spider convalescence home. Okay, the jumping spider is still alive and jumping. The Mrs. Cow Red Back Spider Egg Sack is all shriveled up and it's right in the middle of screen. I'm not sure what's going on there. I believe that's a little teenager and little teenager has uh, taken one of the corners of the metal frame. The large female that I think was from my neighbour's bins has taken up another corner and that's the prime corner with the uh, bottom level as well. That one there is a new feature spider that I just found in my um, wanderings of the garden when making this video. And the major female in this tank, which I believe may be the Mrs. Cow Redback Spider, which has also got the surrogate egg sac from my red bin, I know it gets confusing, doesn't it, uh, is in the corner there, and the carcass of the Black House Spider is being left in the web there. I dare say that will be there for when the spiderlings hatch to have a bit of a nibble on. I'm quite lucky in this spider tank, uh, the structure inside, each one of them I build, uh, teaches me a new lesson about what I should do next time. 
and uh, it's basically a metal structure. It's got like you know, four little homes in a sense a spider could pick up. Now they built their web network uh, going between each of the arms here and I can actually run the tweezers down here uh, between the glass and the metal structure and there's no web uh, which is quite amazing. If I was going to do another tank I'd actually try another design and I've sketched it out here. This is very dodgy brothers, that's the base of the tank, okay, and that's like the back glass in a sense. Uh, let's say if I put an arm in here that extended up from the middle going up out to the corner and then there is little spider home. I'm pretty sure the Redbacks would set up a web network, a triangular style within this shape here. And of course there'd be four of these arms, one coming this way, one going there, one going towards the back. And of course the problem I had with that first little spider tank was the spiders like to make their homes on the corner of the glass and that was a nightmare to see the spiders. Well I'm pretty sure that crummy drawing I did won't make much sense. If I built that shape it'd probably make a lot more sense. I'll get this lid on and I'll show you a little spider catcher that I'm going to put in the backyard. In my wanderings through Kmart Australia I noticed these uh, set of three galvanised tubs or pots or whatever they are. They've got like little hessian handles. Uh, dirt cheap, made in China rubbish that you're going to throw away in a couple of years. I thought to myself, wow, I could utilise these uh, to my way of thinking. I also noticed I had some really inexpensive pot stands and a couple of different sizes. And I thought that if I got some of these tubs and set them on the pot stand, something like that, and I've got the, the bigger tub here that could go on the bigger pot stand, you know what that would be a perfect thing for? Hmm. Oh yeah, if a little bit of attachment here, this has got the perfect standoff here and it's the right size and it's going to get to the right temperature, the red back spider would see this as the perfect home. It's more of the idea of uh, making up an environment to lure the spiders here and then you know where they are and you can deal with them. You know that saying, keep your friends close and keep your enemies even closer.